Hi there, today I want to cover another one of those lab essentials, measurement leads. In this video, I'm not talking about the more specialist leads such as those that come with a scope or multimeter, but those that you can use every day to temporarily hook up things like power, LEDs, audio and so on when experimenting, building, testing and repairing electronics. One warning right away, you should never use these for connecting anything directly to mains and this can be extremely dangerous. It's also good practice to avoid touching or plugging or unplugging connectors while the system is powered on. The first type of lead I'm using have 4mm banana plugs on each end. Most of my lab items such as power supplies, multimeters and the power resistors in the previous videos all have 4mm sockets or 4mm binding posts. So a couple of leads with 4mm banana plugs on either end are very useful. You could buy ready-made leads and they are offered in a variety of colors and lengths with claims of silicon cables, heat resistance and whatnot. In my experience, reputable ready-made leads from distributors like RS Components come with proper data sheets. They are very good but way too expensive for the hobbyist. There are plenty of vendors on the internet selling ready-made leads, usually from China. I have no experience with these, but if they have plugs molded onto the lead like these here, I would be careful. If the wire turns out to be bad, for example too thin or a bad connection in the plug, you have no way of repairing or replacing. Much better and cheaper to buy plugs and wire separately and fabricate your own leads with the length you need. There are different kinds of banana plugs and they come in a wide range of qualities. Probably the worst of the kind are these ones. From 10 of the green ones I bought on eBay, just half separated very quickly in two because the crimp of the tip to the body was too weak. I would also recommend to stay away from connectors where the tip is this kind of springy wire cage that rotates freely around the much thinner central core. Over time corrosion sets in in the inside and you end up with intermittent contact resistance that changes with every slight movement of the connector. Another issue I had with these kind of connectors is that the thread of the grub screw is very weak and can easily shear off when being tightened. There is a hole to connect a second plug but there's no strain relief for the cable when using this connector. This one is even cheaper but actually quite good quality as far as making reliable contacts is concerned. The plug tip and springs are made in one piece and do not rotate and I never had a problem with the cup screw. The main drawback is that it doesn't have a strain relief for the cable and no hole to connect another plug. Here's another eBay favorite very cheap and closely resembling traditional banana plugs. Despite the quote gold plating of the contact area, they do not always provide reliable low ohm connections. They have the same loosely rotating wire cage and therefore suffer from the same varying contact resistance. The best that can be said is that they do provide strain relief and the plastic sleeve also fits standard branded banana plugs. This allows me to buy, for example, 30 black standard branded banana plugs for a lower bulk price and if I need a color other than black, I simply replace the standard sleeve with one from this set. And here are these branded banana plugs. I think I got these from Rapid Electronics. Compared to the Chinese knockoff, you can clearly see the difference in the tip construction and material which makes these plugs much more reliable. My favorite type of plug in daily use is actually this type, even though it has a similar rotating cage construction at the tip. However, this one is much better quality and hardly moves at all. I have used these for quite some time and not experienced any contact problems. I think I also got these from Rapid Electronics. I like them because they are much easier and safer to stack than the other plugs. In any of the others, there's a problem that the next connector is at 90 degrees to the first one and that the tip of the connector sticks out. Not only can this be touched easily, it's also possible that two connectors close to each other with second plugs into them can cause a shortcut. The drawback of these is that they use a solder connection and it requires a bit of skill and a powerful soldering iron to deliver enough heat to do this properly. 
I would not worry too much about getting silicon isolated heat resistant wire for the leads, especially if the conductor turns out to be undersized and copper coated aluminium as it's often the case. I buy these leads here from the DIY stores and they are meant for mains wiring. Another slightly more expensive source are stores selling car parts and accessories such as Halfords in the UK. Generally, I would not go higher than AWG 20 gauge or less than 0.75 square millimeters diameter for the copper core and for leads primarily, primarily connecting to power supplies, I would use at least AWG 18 or 15, that's 1 or even 1.5 square millimeters. These leads may not be quite as flexible, but higher current capacity and the reduced voltage drop is really worth having. The next type of leads are these with alligator clips on both ends. They come in a range of colors and are really useful connecting stuff up, but be aware that they can't handle much current. They are abundant on the internet and so cheap and versatile that I recommend getting a decent number of them, like 30 or more. They are mass produced in the Far East and unsurprisingly it seems that the quality control isn't all that good. So when you get them, the very first act after unpacking is to measure each and every one of the leads for proper conductivity using a multimeter. There should be less than 1 ohm resistance and it should not change if you wiggle the leads. In every batch I bought, I usually find at least some that have a couple of ohms or no or intermittent contact and need to be reworked. Actually, the best way is to rework each one regardless. The last thing you want in a test or repair are unreliable leads. What you often find is that the manufacturers just crimp the cable and the core may not even have been stripped to the copper. It makes a very loose connection. None of the leads I bought in the last couple of years had soldered connections. Opening the folded over tabs is tricky with a very high probability of stabbing yourself. If the folding is as careless as these, the best recourse is to just pull out the wire and then opening the tabs using pliers. I usually don't bother with the crimp tabs and just solder the wire directly onto the clip. Just make sure you use enough heat to create a good bond. This is where a helping hand soldering stand is very useful because the clip and wire will get very hot. Once done, don't forget to test continuity again. If you bought enough of these cables, set some aside during the rework to create the next type of lead. These leads, with a banana plug on one side and an alligator clip on the other, are much more useful than you would think. They can be easily produced while you rework the ready-made alligator clip leads I showed you earlier. Just replace one side with a banana plug for a few of the leads. Also, use the now spare alligator clips and connect them to banana plugs with proper thick wire and not the thin stuff that came with the clips originally. The alligator clips can carry much more current than the flimsy wire they came with. Worthwhile having is a set of alligator clips that can be attached to 4mm banana plugs. These are more heavy duty than the thin ones and convert banana plug ends temporarily into alligator clips particularly useful for connecting to battery terminals and the like. So where to keep the leads when not in use? I came up with this method on the side of one of those DIY storage shelves. On the top we have three wires to attach leads with alligator clips to. The top wire is just for leads that have alligator clips on one end and banana plugs on the other. The next two rows are for leads that have alligator clips on both sides. I used two wires beca because it became a bit crowded. The leads with just banana plugs go into these pieces of wood then have 4mm holes drilled into them. This storage method is compact and while it looks slightly chaotic, it works quite well in practice if you select what you want from the top. On the side you can also see where I keep the extra 4mm alligator clips. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.